subscribe. Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. Today is another subscribers videos video. Uh, it was a bit of a mouthful. Um, I've been sent in a video from Tal, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, and he's from Israel. So he's kindly given us a video for, uh, for us to watch and I'm going to give him a general critique, general overview, tell him how he's doing and points that he needs to kind of improve on and that sort of thing. So hopefully you guys watching this, if you're doing the same things where you can relate to him, um, then you'll you'll be able to see by my feedback the sort of things that you need to be looking out for and things like that. So here is the video clip of Tal. <laughs> Now, the first thing that strikes me with the video is that he has a very, very nice um, hold of the violin. So we luckily we, we could see all of his body and we could see a whole side view as well. So it looked really good, but the violin was nice and out on the side. It was nice and up. It wasn't down. It wasn't too high. It was nice and up. Um, and his, his left hand was perfect. He had a lovely, almost, almost sort of straight line. I know it's not perfect, with, with the bow, but it's an almost a straight line. You don't want the wrist to be up, you want the wrist to be nice and down. So literally, it's almost like you were, as if you were hanging off hanging off a tree, so that your fingers are nice and straight. So that struck me as the first thing. All of that looked really, really good. And all of that goes a long way into making the violin, or getting the most out of the, vi out of the sound of the violin. Um, from what I can see as well, the bow hold was good. I can't always see in some of the subscriber, subscribers' videos how they're holding the violin and things like that. So it's it's difficult for me to give all the tips in the world, um, but I can give enough for you to kind of be going on and moving on to the next stage. But from what I could see, the bow hold looked the bow hold looks looked pretty good. It's nothing that looked, from what I could tell, nothing that looked sort of untoward or anything like that. Um, the one, the, the main thing that I probably noticed is there was quite a lot of delay going on with the bow and fingers. So, but, so by delay, I mean, um, and let me see if I can. So I'm sorry if that sounded awful. I've spent so many years trying not to do delay anymore with my fingers on my bow that actually trying to demonstrate that to either students when I'm teaching them or, or you guys on this video is very, very difficult to do. So it's not quite realistic, but you know, it's, it just gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. So what it is, is when the bow has moved and the bow's moved on to the next note, but the finger is still on the first note and it hasn't quite moved yet. So and you get that kind of sound, put that together and you kind of get a, a delay. It's almost a delay. Again, I'm sorry I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you, hopefully you sort of see what I mean. What you need to do with that is to do slow practice. So you would do that several times over. So A, the bow gets to know what it's doing, B, the fingers gets to know what it's doing, and then gradually speed that up. So you would need to do that quite a few times at that speed, then do it quite a few times at the next speed, quite a few times at the next speed, quite a few times, until you've got up to the desired speed, and then you'll find that there'll be very little, if not no delay whatsoever. Don't be fooled and go straight into doing straight into doing it fast because you will get that delay and you'll find it very difficult to get rid of the, the delay. You'll be so used to hearing the delay that you will actually think that the delay is fine and normal. So the way to get rid of delay is just a slow, consistent practice and gradually build up that speed. Um, okay, 
I'd like to see the bow arm a little bit straighter. Again, this is a this is a common thing that I'm finding in most of the subscribers' videos. Either the bow hold isn't flexible enough, um, or what they're doing with the bow. And this is very difficult. You know, there are so many things. This isn't meant to be sort of negative. This is just sort of this is what I see all the time. So what most people tend to do is to move their arm this part of the arm that my bow is holding, the top part of my arm from my shoulder to my elbow, they tend to move it backwards and forwards. That's wrong, What you, you don't really want to do that because you're gonna end up with the bow waving around all over the place. What you need to do is the bow must not go any further than your, than your back. So if you were standing flat against the wall, you wouldn't be able to move your arm into the wall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bow from the elbow. And then you can see on the violin the bow is nice and straight then and I'm getting a nice consistent tone. You need to be bowing in the middle of the bow, uh, sorry on the middle of the violin so not on the fingerboard, not on the bridge. If you're moving your arm backwards and forwards then you're going to be half on the half on the fingerboard, half on the bridge and the other way and the bow is going to be sliding about all the place and you're not going to get a nice clean consistent tone. Sometimes it'll be soft and scratchy and, and all that kind of thing. So try and keep the arm nice and straight so you are just bowing from the elbow and therefore you will get a nice, a better, clean, consistent tone and you can develop from then on. Um, the violin just needs to be in tune as well. It was ever so slightly out of tune there. It's really important that you do have an in tune violin as much as possible so that your ears don't get used to the violin being out of tune and then the out of tune notes actually become in tune to you when they're not and also you don't compensate for your, your fingers. So if your, your, your strings are too sharp then your, your fingers are going to be too high up on the fingerboard and, and if it's too flat they're going to be too far back and that's going to be a bit of a problem because you're, then when you do have your, your fingers, sorry, when you do have your violin in tune your fingers will be too high up and it's, it's just going to be a nightmare. So folks try and get your violin as in tune as possible. I know it's really really difficult and I know you're going to say how do I do it? Um, I do have a couple of videos on how to tune the violin, so please go and have a search on my channel if I if I forget to, to link wherever it is. Um, I've got eight ways to tune the violin, so eight different ways of tuning your violin from apps on your phone to chromatic tuners to the piano, whatever. And then I actually tell you how to do it. If you don't feel confident doing it, try and get a friend or maybe a shop might do it or a local teacher or I don't know, it's someone. But try and get the violin as in tune as possible because it will it will make um, a world of different difference. When the violin is not in tune, it doesn't operate at its best either. So uh, it works well to be in in the in in the tuning that it's in it's in now traditionally. So thanks very much to Tal from Israel there for sending in that clip. Um, I hope that has helped you, Tal, and I hope any of you out there that can recognise the same kind of symptoms or the same sort of thing that you're doing and thinking, oh yeah, I'm doing that, then hopefully this has helped you to correct that situation. Um, and hopefully Tal can, in maybe a couple of months' time, um, put a video response underneath this and we can see how much he's improved from it. So thanks very much for Tal. Thanks very much, guys, for watching. Please subscribe to my channel um, and like the video and all that kind of stuff. And I will see you all next time. Subscribe.